Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to my channel. I am Rof Yaseen and in this video tutorial we are going to perform CRUD operations in ASP.NET Core MVC uh, .NET 5 with SQL Server. So uh, before creating a project let's understand a quick uh, I'm going to give you a quick introduction of .NET 5 which is the major, major release of .NET Core after uh, .NET 3.1 .NET Core 3.1 so basically .NET, Core, .NET 5 is a unified variant of .NET Core 3.1 and the Microsoft .NET Framework 4.8 and now in order to remove uh, the complexity or uh, misconfusion Microsoft renamed the .NET Core variant uh, ASP.NET Core 5.0 is basically into .NET 5 to avoid confusion between ASP.NET MVC 5, ASP.NET Core 5 and dotnet core related things so, so basically uh, .NET 5 is a unified variant uh, unified variant of uh, uh, microsoft dotnet core 3.1 and the microsoft dotnet framework 4.8 and this is the major release and by the way this is open source framework and the complete source code of framework is available on github and more importantly it is cross platform so we are going to perform uh, cred operations we are going to create a ASP.NET Core MVC based application in which we will perform CRUD operation which is uh, create, read, update, delete and we will learn all the things related to .NET 5 Entity Framework and SQL Server. We will perform CRUD operations using SQL Server databases. So let's get started create a new project from here and from here we are going to select ASP.NET Core MVC. So basically, this is the template we are going to use ASP.NET Core Web App uh, Model Views Controller. Click Next, and we are going to select uh, the folder. So And over here we'll write employee crud app. Okay. And next configure for HTTPS. It's okay. We don't need any authentication, but we, we do need this enable razor runtime compilation. Click create. This will create our .NET 5 core MVC application for us. So this is our app. Okay, so this is basically a solution explorer where we contain a bunch of files related to .NET 5. So uh, I'm going to give you a qu quick introduction of these files. So basically, we have dependencies. It means it contains all the installed NuGet pa packages. Whatever packages you will install from the NuGet will be uh, residing here so if you come here in the packages you can see we we have selected dotnet core razor runtime at the start up and it it automatically adds that package in this section and we will install entity framework core uh, that will also be, will be shown here so basically this dependency section contains all the external libraries packages you will download from uh, many new get packages will be displayed here then we have over here is a properties and in, in here we have launch settings.json it basically contain uh, uh, the profiles of our application like we have IAS settings which will be our application URL SSL port because we have configured uh, 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 HTTPS connection uh, and we have uh, this the, environment variable like we are currently in, in development mode and this is the razor runtime compilation and this is we have uh, another uh, basically a profile where we are setting launch browser and things like that so so basically this is a uh, just the launch settings dot when we, these settings are applied when our application get launched from this visual studio on the browser and these settings are applied to the web application so next we have www root 
which basically it is a web root folder of ASP.NET Core MVC application and we can put all the static files like HTML, uh, oh sorry, JavaScript, CSS, images and any HTML template pages we can put inside here. Basically it contains static files. So basically if you come here, you can see we have CSS, uh, JS and we have some external libraries like Bootstrap, jQuery, jQuery validation and uh, unobtrusive. And after that, we have controller obviously you are familiar with controllers we we have controllers where our end end user will hit the request inside the action result of controller so this is basically a controller which contains controller classes and next thing is the model which is domain model of our application like products categories employees all the models will reside here and here is the views which contains basically views related to our application look we have con home controller then we have home folder here and uh, all the views related to this controller will be in this folder and if it doesn't find any views uh, called here in the home controller and if the view is not present in the home folder then it will look uh, in the shared folder so that's it uh, and next we have app settings dot json file basically it contains application configuration file uh application configuration which is to use like configure services uh oh sorry uh, configure our connection string logging configuration and let's say we want to use some external key based key value pair things we can store here and after that we have this program.cs which is the entry point of our application if you're familiar with the console applications you you, you know every c sharp console application has a main method a program.cs and main method and which is the basically startup or entry point of our application and inside here it is calling create host builder and it is pa passing command line arguments and this is the create host builder method which is again calling another class which is a startup so if you come here in the startup file it contains basically it contains a startup class then constructor for injecting a i configuration and it basically it contains two methods configure services and configure so basically this is the container where we if we uh, inject or register our services and this is the application middleware and the, over here in this section order is very important you you will have to set up things in in an order and this is the i service you can say i service collection container you can uh, enter uh, you can register your services at any order order doesn't matter in this method so but this is the middleware this is the pipeline of your application how your application goes through uh, a pipeline so order matter here okay so basically that's it for the quick introduction of this dotnet core mvc application uh, but but we're going to perform cred operation so let's start and first of all we need a controller in order to perform cred operations we need a controller so obviously we'll we'll create a controller and let's say we're going to perform CRUD operation with, with employee so I'm going to create empty controller MVC empty controller and I will rename this controller as employee controller that's it this is uh, the simple controller which contains one basic index method but we uh, index section result which will return view and obviously we don't have any view for this controller so we, we can stay here so our controller work is completed now we can come here in the models and we will create a model class for employee and this class has some properties so we can create prop int id for employee id prop string first name last name and we can set string mobile number 
string email then we have address line one two city postcode country and that's it address line one address line two city postcode country okay so this is basically uh, we have only one model for the employees and this is basically uh, will will be uh, an employees table inside our database we'll configure entity framework in a minute so it will be like a employee model in the database okay so after that we have uh, our model ready we have our controller now it's time to install entity framework so we'll go here in the employee crud app and click here manage new get packages and over here we'll browse for microsoft dot entity framework dot sql server So basically this is the framework which we are going to install microsoft.entityframeworkcore.sql server and we will select which is the latest stable version 5.0.8 that's it click here to install and i accept another important package we'll have to install is this microsoft.entityframeworkcore.sqlserver.design which we basically uh, will allow us to run our migrations and things on, on on within the entity framework so install this accept that's it now it's time to create our db context class so i will go here and i will add a folder data and in this folder i will create my db context class so i will write employee context and this is our basically this is our db context class and before implementing this db, DB context we'll have to create our connection string so we're going to create a connect, connection string inside here in the app settings.json file so after that we can write here connection strings and over here we will write the name of our connection string which is default connection and over here I will write server equals to which will be the name of my server then we have database which will be the name of my database and we have trust rate underscore connection equals to true and then we have multiple active result sets equals to true and over here we'll have to specify the name of our database let me open my sql server and this will be uh, name of our server and our name of our uh, database will be employee crud db so we'll copy the name of our server from here and we can paste name of our server here so this is our server name then we have database name employee crud db then trusted connection equals to true and multiple active results equals to true so that's it so we have set up our connection string between the inside app settings.json file and now now we are we are ready to set up our db context class so basically this is our employee context which will inherit from db context
control dot and import this namespace using Microsoft dot entity framework core. So this is our DB context class. And inside here, I will create a constructor employee context and inside here I will pass db context options db context options and option of type employee context options and we will pass these options to base constructor options and that's it for this constructor we don't need anything else for this constructor so what we can do we can move this to here okay so this is basically our db context uh, uh, class setup now we'll come here in the startup class and i already told you we'll have to set up every service within this uh, add services to this container so we will add our connection string service to this container to write services dot add db context and over here i will write the name of my context class which is employee context control dot and after that I will create some options options goes to this and that's it and over here I will register my SQL server connection string options dot use SQL server control dot and import this namespace and over here I will write configuration what is the name of our yeah configuration configuration dot get connection string and over here I will write the name of my connection string default connection Okay, remember this default connection we have defined in the app settings.json. This is the name of our connection string, and we are giving that name here. So that's it for this section. So we have set up our connection string within the startup.cs and app settings.cs, app settings.json file, and we have created this uh, employee context class, and we are passing that employee context to the base constructor class. Okay. So it's now it's time to set up our table. So we have we already have created employee table. The only thing we need to set up here property of DB set employee control dot import the namespace and over here we will set the name of our table in the database employees. Perfect. So quick review, we have set up, we have installed entity frameworks.sql server, then we created this context class, we configured our connection string in the app settings.json file, pass in the constructor class and set up in the startup.cs uh, class. And this is the last thing we did uh, to add a DB set of our employees model. Now it's time to create our database. So how we will create our database, we'll come here in the package manager console. and crud app okay so over here i will add add migration and i will write name of my migration initial create you can write any name here look it is telling add migration is recognized not recognized blah 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 and basically th this is an important error so basically errors are very good you need to understand if you search this error basically it will tell you you need microsoft identity framework code or tools in order to run migration so we we have already installed one package which i which was i remembered this design sql server or design is required but we still need entity framework code or tools in order to run migration so we can install it no problem
Microsoft Entity Framework Core dot tool. So we'll install this. I accept. Perfect. Now we can come here uh, and we we can again run that migration. Add migration. Initial create and add. that's it you need you can see it is creating a create table which basically the name of our table is employees then it is setting up some properties of connect uh, uh, our table and that's it but the important thing here is to notice is it's created another folder inside the solution uh, project and which is not a good thing basically we, we want to set up this migrations folder within our data folder which is basically related to uh, our DB context and things so we need to move this folder so what we can see look it is telling remove migrations in order to undo, undo. so we can write here remove migration so basically it, it removes the created migration for us and if you come here look that migration folder is removed from here we can create again add migration initial create and this time we will specify an output directory and which which, which will be our data folder okay so we want to run this migration inside our data folder. So basically we will write here add migration. The name of our migration initial create. Then we will specify an output directory which will be data folder. This data folder and inside here we want to create another folder migrations. Okay. So if you click here and add. You can see in this time it creates migration within this folder and which is under the data folder okay now the only thing we need to write here is update database and hit enter perfect build succeeded now we can make sure our database is created or not And you can see here employee crud db and it is created uh, an employees table for us perfect so we are good to go the next thing is to create a crud operation or basic setup is now ready so we can come here in the controllers folder and in the employees controller and over here inside the employee controller we basically will inject our db uh, store context or employees context clause employee context which is our connection string context and we can write here control dot and create and assign field app uh, context and we can write here underscore in order to remove this complexity and underscore context by convention is a good thing so we have injected our connection string so next thing in the index section we will basically return the list you can rename this section if you want to do so but uh, but i think it is good we don't need to change this index so we can here we can write here employees equals to underscore context dot employees dot to list so basically we are calling our, our database so it is best practice to use async method when you are calling to database in order to set up 100% uh, responsiveness of our application so we can set this method to async and we can write here await okay and after that oh, or we can use basically this to link to list is not for the async we can use to list to list async variant control dot yeah that's it and we can pass these these employees to our view so this basically this will be the list of our employees and if i come here right click add view razor view add 
and we will select a template from from here is a list and we'll set up the name of our model is employees and we can uh, we can look here we cannot look here so we can click here to select the sh uh, shared layout underscore layout dot html perfect and we don't need any reference libraries because this is not a form this is just a html table to display the list of our employees perfect so this scaffolding mechanism is automatically created our display page which is basically you, you understand we are passing list and it is already mapped that model into IE enumerable and we have this table which contains some of the properties and we have here is the thing like table and this is for primary key we will set up this in a minute so if you run your application at this stage and this is our application so if I click here and over here I will write the name of my controller employee slash name of my index action and this is our view the employee list view I'll change this view a little bit so we can come here and we'll use the benefit of our uh, razor runtime compilation and I will here I will here I will change employee list and I will change this table to table dash stripped and we don't need this ID column anymore here and we also we don't need this to display HTML one address line one and address line two if you want to display you can do but I don't think so we should display here so I'll remove this too and if I come here in the browser again and refresh perfect you can see we have uh, employee list here then this create new and we have first name, last name, mobile number, email, city, postal code and country. That's it. So now we'll create click here. If you click here, look, we don't have any create action inside uh, our employees controller. We'll create one in a minute. So we have changed this create button to we applied this class btn btn primary to look like this a bit. This link as a button. So now we are going to create another action for basically displaying the form so we can click here public i action result create and over here we write simply return view and we are not setting up this connection uh, this i action result into async because we don't need to call any dat databases this will be a basically simple http get call and the application will display the form of our employer so we can write click here add view razor view at and we need view name create then we will specify a model name create or template name create then model name employee model don't need to specify context class but we do need to specify this reference script libraries because we want to implement uh, uh, client site validation so that's why reference script libraries are required and click add That's it. It is created. It is created a form for us, and this is create. We don't need this H1, and we can write here employee information, and 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 that's it. Now we can run this application and see what it is giving us.
And the important thing, we don't have any links here, so we, we, we have to manually navigate to uh, these action results. So I'm going to create these links straight away. So I can come here in the shared folder in the layout file. And you can see over here we have a home. And we can create here link employee list. New employee. And we will have to call employee controller. And this will hit to index action of employee controller and this will hit to create action of employee controller. This makes sense. So we can click here so that we, we, we don't have to manually type in the URL like employee controller and things. We can click here and we can navigate to our, our controller. So look employee list when I click here. So this is basically our employee uh, list form and if I click here it is opening this employee uh, form for us. So basically this is employee information. This is an ID column. And we have first name, last name, mobile number, email address and everything for what we have required here. And this ID column is by the way an auto incremented field by convention. So we don't need this. So we can come here in the create action. We don't need this ID column anymore. We can remove this here. So basically what it is doing for us is creating column D4 and all the form within that column D4. So what we can do, we can click here column D, we can set column D6 here and this is our form. This is our model and these are our controls. So we can create here our own classes. div class is equal to call md-4. This is our first class, uh, first column. So we can copy this and paste this. And better, we can add div class is equal to row. And inside this row, we can click here. Yeah, that's it. This makes sense because we, we want to display uh, okay we want to display in two uh, controls in a line so this is for two 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 okay so now we can cut here this is first name it, it, it will come into the first four column of this row and we have this cut second four column of this row and cut And we have address line one, address line two. It's up to you. If you don't want to change the layout, you you, you don't have to change. Basically, I, I want to change it. Cut it. And the next thing is this country. And we don't need this column anymore. So we can remove this and we can come here. And if I go here in the browser and I refresh this page, let's see what it is doing for us. So look, basically it is, it, it display in two columns, but very small column. So basically what we can do, we can come here and we can write here 12. We can set here six, 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 six. So in each row we have 12 columns, so we can set here six column for each control. That's it. Come here and try to see if it is doing anything. Okay, perfect. So this is our employee form and form is ready. If I click here back to the list, it is navigating back to the list form and if I click here it is navigating to the employee form that's it now what I if I click here in the create action look nothing happening because we don't have any HTTP post action for this uh, create action so we, we are going to create that HTTP post action in the employee controller 
what I will write here HTTP post and I will write here validate entity forgery token and over here this is basically you used to avoid hacking uh, task of uh, async task of i action result and we will write create and this create basically accept a form because our view is pointed with the model employee employee control dot this is our model and perfect and over here first of all we will check here if model straight dot is valid then we will do here what we are going to do Other, otherwise we will simply return view and we will pause the incoming model inside the view if anything happens validation or any issue it will simply return the view otherwise if model state is valid and then we will come here and we will do underscore context dot employees dot add employee and we will write here context dot save changes async and we can set here a wait and after that we can write here return redirect to action and we can write here the name of our action name of index name of our action is index okay so basically this is uh, you can say quickly quickly it will add into the database and it will do whatever we're telling it, it it is to do so let's start and see what it is doing for us So if I click here in the employee list, we have nothing in the employees list because we don't have any employees here. If I click here to create new and let's see if I writing something Muhammad, Ahmad and some mobile Okay, and if I click here in the create and perfect, you can see it successfully added our employees. But what we can see here, it is showing us one in the list here. So we need to change in the employee index. So look, we have this first for the first name, and we have this for the ID. So we don't need to display this ID, and instead of separate first name and last name we can come here and we can write here full name and over here we have this display we can cut here and we can write here we don't need this separate column okay so if you come here and refresh this So you can see we have Muhammad Ahmad inside full name, then mobile, then email and all the things related to this. So if you come here in the create new and click here, look what it does. It it it, it added an empty row uh, to our employees. You can see this is our empty row. And if you write something here and click create and you can see this is empty row. And we need to validate our data. So how we can validate our data if you come here and this is our model where is our model and In inside models for we have employees model and we want this field to be required 
So we write here required control dot import the namespace and over here we can set error message equals to in, uh, first name is required okay and we can also set up an other data type here maximum length of 50 and we, we can specify error message first name should contain maximum 50 characters okay so this is how you can apply data annotations so let's say i want to apply these data annotations to first name last name and over here in the email i want to apply another data annotation data type data type dot email and and that's it this is just to show you how to you can apply data annotation there are another properties of the, these data annotations maximum length minimum length data types regular uh, expressions and now what we'll have to do in order to impact these things if you look here first name and we have maximum length 50 and if you come here in the sql server right click design and you can see all the string properties has and voucher of max so we need to control this uh, i have shown you how to you can control and in order to impact these changes to the database we will have to create another migration so what we can write here add migration and we can write the name of migration added data annotations to employ model always use give a useful name to uh, your migration so i can click here to add and look it is telling last name property of our employees model and set its type to nvarch or 50 instead of max old type look old type was nvarch or max and that's it and it is also setting null label equals to false it means that it is now required field we can write here we can click here update database and that's it if you come here in the SQL Server, close this, right click, design it again. And I think these changes are not applied. Refresh. Refresh. Applies. Design. These changes are still not applied. Let me see what it is doing for us. Can it insert the null value because we already have inserted the null value so this is the issue if you come here in the edit and edit this table look we, we already inserted null value that's why these migrations are not applying so we can come here and we can remove these three rows so the database is empty now we can run the migration again update database and done if you come here and right click design it again and you can see first name and watch your 50 50 and allow nulls is false now if you start your application at this stage after applying these data annotation and you remember we have uh, set up uh, when we we was creating uh, we created this form we we clicked enable partial scripts so basically what it is doing it is doing scripts and render validation scripts partial so if you go here in the shared folder you can see validation partial scripts and what it is including for us jquery validation and jquery unobtrusive validation so insert here www these are all and these basically validations are required to uh, uh, perform client side validation so you can see its behavior if you come here in the employees list we don't have obviously we don't have any employee here and click here and click here create look validations are applied first name is required last name is required and similarly you can write your own validations okay so i can write here again muhammad ahmad muhammad ahmad 0344 okay click here and that's it 
now we have successfully created data uh, insert operation display operation and uh, uh, client side validation and that data annotations now it's time to click here and write the edit action so if you click here look it is calling employee slash edit and it is not passing any uh, id for the employee so if you come here in the list view the first thing we'll have to change this behavior to uncomment we don't need any details action by the way so we can remove here straight away and we 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 will have to pass an id property of our employee so basically this is our parameter which we'll have to pass inside our controller so in order to see this impacting here we should have an id of employee after that edit action so look when i click here edit you can see slash 4 so we got an id and we'll have to pass this id to this edit action so we can come here in the employee controller <coughs> sorry and we will create another action and public async task of i action result edit and it is expecting an id which will be an optional because we want to set this id as an optional and over here we will check if id equals to null or id equals to 0 or we can say id less than equals to 0 and we can simply return here bad request we don't want to handle any request which comes with this without id or id is equals to 0 and otherwise what we can do we can click here for employee in db equals to underscore context dot employees dot first or default async and over here we, we can pass here e goes to e dot id which is equals to id that's it and basically we are calling async method and we will have to use await keyword here that's it and after that we'll check here if employee in db is equals to null then we can click here return not found you can specify obviously you can specify a bad request view not found views your customized views okay and after that what we want to do we want to return view if this imply exit exist so we can pause here employee in db so if you want to implement both actions in the create you can do no problem but uh, in order to avoid complexity i am going uh, to create another view for the edit so i can click here right click add view razor view add and i will create here edit view and i will specify employees model and obviously this will also contain a form so reference script libraries is also included here so we can come here and set up this so this created us a form of all the required fields and that's it so basically this is also a form we don't need to we can set here employee information and we can write here update update employee information we don't need this edit here and that's it uh, basically when we come here in the employee controller we need another action which will accept this update method so we can set task of i action result edit which will also accept an employee model 
and over here we will check if model state dot is valid and we can this time we can quickly return a view here by specifying not operator here so this is just to show you how you can use different approaches over here we are writing like this and we will be writing like this so we will simply return view employ okay and if this employee exists now what we can uh, write here if this employee exists and it is like exists and it is valid so we can write here simply we can write here context dot employees dot uh, context dot entry and we can specify entry of employee dot straight equals to entity state dot modified okay you can use this approach for updating you can use context dot employees dot update and you can pass con uh, employee like this you can use this way you can use this way otherwise if you want to update each property you can use that approach as well so it's up to you whatever you want to use i want to use this update approach and after that i will write here context dot save changes async and this is obviously a wait so after that i will return redirect to action of name of index okay i want to return to the index section and that's it this is the basically a detection let's see how it is working let's start the application employee list click here edit and we got an server error. the request match multiple endpoints edit edit and we need to see the request matches multiple endpoints employee slash edit slash four so if we come here in the controller action and we can see what we what our request is doing so we can add breakpoint here oh basically we, we don't have specified here an HTTP post so basically we need to specify an HTTP post here and we also need to specify validate entity forgery anti forgery, forgery token let's start one more time so basically by convention this is a get request and this is a post request so get by default if you if you you are not specifying anything it will be considered as a get request and we <laughs> we have two get request of edit and which this was a confusion click here in the employee list edit and perfect you can see this is our edit action and which is obviously which is a different action and if you want to display id you can display here but here user can change this id so we need to change this behavior we if we come here in the edit action edit view and this is an id column we can set here we can set here we don't need this here so basically instead of this we can use and hidden attribute at html dot hidden for m goes to or you can write e goes to e dot id that's it this will be a hidden field here and if you if you want to change the layout you can change because i already showed you how you can change the layout but this was an important thing to in order to avoid this id to be edited here 
so that's why I removed here and I set up this ID column as a hidden field so let's say I want to write an email here info at ahmad.com and country UK save perfect you can see these changes are being applied inside our model so next thing is to create a delete action and obviously if you look at here downside when I move here you can see slash delete slash 4 so basically we need to create a delete action here in the controller so we can come here in employees controller and this delete action is uh, basically hmm. so we can come here and we can write a public async task of i action result delete int of id check here if id equals to null or id less than equals to zero then we will return here return bad request okay so after that we'll check var employee in db equals to underscore context or we can write await underscore context dot employees dot first or default async e goes to e dot e dot id equals to id okay and after that we'll check if employee in db equals to null then we can return here return http uh, or simply write return not found otherwise if we have we still have an employee so we can write here context dot employees dot remove and we can pass employee in in db okay and after that we can write here await context dot save changes async and return redirect to action name of index okay so let's start and see if it is working or not and click here in the employee list we don't have any enough employees so we can quickly create some employees create create and if you click here on the this employee look it is deleted if you click here deleted if you click here and write some address line this 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 and click here and you can see all these things are updated so this was the real quick tutorial not exactly quick basically we have spent an hour in order to learn all these things so this was important basically if you know at startup we'll have to spend some time for the connection string for the context db context entity framework configuration database thing migration and everything so basically in startup uh, you understand it, it, these things take take some time so we have successfully created crud application so now you, in order to create another crud operations on uh, some other uh, you can say entity you can quickly create and you can run so this was just a quick tutorial uh, to show you how to perform crud operations and we still are missing something we, we do have implemented some uh, these validations but we're still missing uh, some of things uh, so if you write here abc and click create look we still have write some validations but we, st we are still missing we, we 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 don't have implemented custom view so if you click here in the edit and you write here 10 id you 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 know we don't have any imply with the 10 id look no, no web page for the phone for this because we, we already have written HTTP not found here we haven't supplied any custom views for this so if you write here a bad request here ABC and look HTTP 400 error bad request so if you want to see 
or want to learn how to handle these custom views custom error views how to handle exceptions and how to display custom views you can let me know in the comment section i will be reading your comment and if you are in interested in these things i will extend this application instead of wasting again and again a new time and creating new application new things we can ex extend this application from here to add those custom error views and if you notice here if i click here on edit action and i edit something click here we are not getting any kind of notifications like things like alertify or toaster or any kind of notification we are not getting any kind of notification not displaying any kind of useful notification to the user so if you are interested to learn notifications how to manage notifications you can let me know in the comment section and one more thing which is the last thing if you want to implement the same thing using some of design patterns such as repository pattern or generic repository or things like specification pattern or unit of work pattern you can let me know in the comment section we can walk through and we can learn all those things with you okay so thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video you can obviously subscribe to my channel share these videos with your friends and family and click uh, like share comment and all the things and more importantly if you like my efforts you can support me by giving me a buy me a coffee gift i'll put the description uh, link in the description so and another important thing if you learn all the basics and advanced concepts of mvc you can watch my eight hours of course tutorial series of asp.net mvc i put that link in the description and we are creating an e-commerce application in dotnet 5 uh, which is the separate series so you can if you, you you want to learn a project based tutorial you can watch that tutorial i'll put that link in the uh, description box okay so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye